Can Birds Taste? At one time, it was thought that birds had little or no sense of taste, a belief that was universally accepted by the scientific community. Until recently. One reason for this is that birds generally do have fewer taste buds than mammals and other vertebrates. But not only that, birds have less than 5% of their taste buds on their tongue. Instead, 70% occur on the palate and 25% on the lower mandible and pharyngeal floor. This is due to the different feeding action of birds compared with mammals. After all, birds don't have teeth, so the food needs to spend much less time near the tongue. Taste receptor physiology also varies depending on the type of bird. For example, songbirds, chickens, and pigeons have a different kind of taste bud structure than ducks and waders, and parrots have their own unique structure more similar to mammals. So it's hardly surprising that people were confused by the sense of taste in birds, and just gave up thinking that every bird was like a chicken. In fact, the earlier studies on taste in birds only ever looked at chickens. These earlier studies were thought to generalize to other birds. Chickens lack the traditional sweet receptor, and so some people believed that all birds could not taste sweet. But fruits are the second most common food for birds after insects. Could it be that birds that eat fruits and nectar don't enjoy the sweet taste? Well, no. Some birds seem highly attuned to sweets such as nectar. For example, Douglas Levy studied four species of tanagers and two species of mannequins. He fed birds a mixture of mashed bananas and soy protein with some added sucrose to vary the overall sugar concentration. He presented the birds with three concentrations of sucrose, 8%, 10%, and 12%. The mannequins did not show preference for any one concentration over the other. The tanagers, on the other hand, consistently showed a preference for the sweeter concentrations. Does this mean the tanagers could actually taste sugar? What if instead they selected the sweeter concentration based on metabolic effects rather than taste? This is not likely because, during the first hours of each trial, the tanagers sampled from all the plates and rapidly chose the sweeter plate, which wouldn't have given them enough time to feel the differential metabolic effects of the samples. Also, in each trial, the positions of the food plates were randomized so that learning could not take place, thereby ruling out a stronger discrimination ability based on metabolic effects from previous trials. I don't know about birds, but I find these bananas delicious. But why did the mannequins who feed on fruit show no preference for sweeter foods? The author proposed that mannequins swallow fruits whole, and so being able to distinguish variations in sweetness would not be useful to them. On the other hand, tanagers crush fruits in their mouths, releasing juices. Another reason why birds were not thought to be sensitive to sweet is that many birds lack the traditional sweet taste receptor complex, including hummingbirds. But hummingbirds feed on nectar, so shouldn't they be able to taste sweet? This conundrum puzzled researchers for a long time. A breakthrough happened in 2014 when researcher Maud Baldwin found that the taste receptor complex traditionally used to detect umami in other animals acted as a sweet receptor in hummingbirds, while this same receptor in chickens and chimney swifts only responds to amino acids. Using genetic techniques, Baldwin and her team found that the umami receptor complex evolved to serve as a novel sweet receptor. It is thought that this new ability to detect sweets caused early hummingbird ancestors to diverge from their closest relatives, the insectivorous swifts, and thus initiated the massive radiation of hummingbirds that we see today. This is an example of how taste in birds does not always work the same way as it does in other animals. Who knows what other secrets are still waiting to be discovered about taste in birds. Still, not all birds can taste sugar, such as meat-eating birds like raptors, who do not need sugar. Indeed, several animals that eat only meat do not show any preference for sugar, and some have been shown to have lost the sweet taste receptor altogether. What about bitter flavors? The story here is a bit more complex, and little is known about the ability of birds to detect bitter flavors. It is true that cockatiels show a similar bitter taste sensitivity as humans. But certain birds don't reject bitter flavors like mammals. This is different from humans who use bitter to detect toxins in potentially dangerous and inedible foods. However, that does not mean that these birds cannot identify the flavor of a bitter substance. 
Starlings can learn to associate a bitter flavor with toxicity and use this information to reject food either by not eating it or vomiting it. This makes sense because starlings are insectivorous and thus, the ability to associate different flavors with toxicity is useful in learning to choose the best insect foods. But are there any birds that can taste bitter and reject it immediately? Well, yes. In one study, different birds were observed tasting the nectar of a flower in the aloe genus. This flower has bitter nectar, at least to humans. After tasting this nectar from plastic flowers, sunbirds immediately rejected it with a violent reaction, showing a possible ability to taste bitter. The omnivorous common raven also immediately rejects bitter quinine solutions at low and high concentrations, which may indicate that ravens use a bitter taste in order to select higher quality foods as opportunities arise. Other birds, such as turkeys, emus, and chickens have bitter taste receptors as well, and thus also may use bitter taste to select preferred foods. Let's not forget that different humans taste bitter quite differently, with some being quite averse to bitter, while others can barely taste it. So it's hard to simplify the taste abilities of several thousand species of birds with one simple answer. Many birds also show an ability to detect amino acids, salt, and calcium. How much of this is taste and how much is post-ingestive sensing is still unclear. With all these results on taste, it is important to remember that the presence of taste receptor complexes and their behavioral reactions to different foods does not mean that birds will perceive taste like us. For example, the taste receptor complex in humans for umami responds to different amino acids compared to the umami complex in rodents and pigs. Thus, taste receptor complexes can vary in different animals based on their nutritional requirements. Furthermore, how taste receptors correspond to perception is hard to understand because different animals have different brains and thus different ways of integrating this into consciousness. So although we can observe behavior showing that birds have a sense of taste, exactly how they perceive taste in their minds will forever be a mystery. So can birds taste? Well, yes and they have a much more refined sense of taste than previously thought. But although they have a sense of taste, taste does not always work the same way in birds as it does in mammals. In some areas of bird taste, there is still a lot of mystery, and in fact, the taste abilities of the vast majority of birds has not been studied. Therefore, a lot more work with a lot more species is still necessary to understand how taste works in birds.